The uh, unmistakable sound of overdrive. Hey! hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Uh, today, we're talking about a rather special little box. Uh, this is the JHS Colour Box. This... It's already burning my eyes out with the LED. Yes. Yes, it's That's rather quite, bright. Quite bright. It is. There you go. Just uh, uh, better. This uh, this falls into the same category of pedals as the um, Strymon Deco. Mm. The we don't really know, or at least I don't really know what it is. So okay. Uh, yeah, go for it. This is modelled after an old Neve ten seventy three preamp. So the Neve ten seventy three preamp is rather legendary. It's it's what made Rupert Neve famous, basically. There's a certain sound of it. Yeah. And in the 60s and 70s, lots of guitar players would plug directly into the desk, bypassing their amplifier. And I say lots. There's a few. There's a notable few. But there's a sound that these old desks have. Uh, there's a transformer in the circuit colours the, the tone. Yeah, because normally it's just a straight no-no, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You want you want something in between the desk and, and your guitar. You don't want... But there we are. There we are. They did it. It was the 70s. They did it. It was like, ah, oh, I can't set the mic up today. Just what happens if we just plug in? <laughs> ah, crank it up. There it is. Now, I was really surprised. I, this arrived yesterday. And I put a picture of it up on Facebook. I said, wow, you know, I'm really excited to try this out. And the list of comments after that was amazing. Right. So some people are like, oh, yeah, I've got it. It's wonderful. Some guys like, ah, oh, it's the worst thing ever. And very divisive, okay? Partly, there's, there's two reasons for that. Partly because, I think wrongly or rightly, the word, uh, the name Neve yep. has been associated with, with the uh, in the bump, and people are you know the the guys who are into the Neve consoles and things have, have been very passionate about yeah 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 it's, that it's stuff. audiophile isn't it it's to the nth yeah. degree it's yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah. very full on science graphs and things of course the other thing is depending on where you place this in the chain and what sort of amplifier you're going into it will either sound great or it will sound not worth the four hundred dollar price tag. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> so, what I've, I've got to set up at the moment is an overdrive pedal. All right. So, basically, we're using the Hampstead today. Uh, this is the twenty watt EL thirty four cathod bias, lovely thing that we we featured in a couple of bit a um, couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So here's the Hampstead by itself. <laughs> Now, warm, crunchy goodness. Warm, crunchy goodness. It's but, just you know, but with the soup son of highs there too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You want that little bit of <laughs> fidelity in there. <laughs> but now I'm going to throw the color box in on top of that. Now, if I put it on the bridge pickup and turn it up. <laughs> You know what that sounds like to me? Tell me. It sounds like you've got a guitar sound, you put a boost on it, you throw it out the back of your car and you drag it along the road. <laughs> in a good way. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. It's kind of gravelly and gritty. It's, it is gravelly and gritty. And that is uh, some of the magic of the this particular circuit and the way that the transformer works in, in relation to the EQ and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, because the breakup is not a nice, smooth even break up. Not at all. Right? But if we, I've, I've set up the, the blues driver next to it just so that you can hear it in comparison. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this is the color box. And there's the blues driver. So, 
I think the, the blues driver, which is a great sound, but it breaks up in a much more uniform way. Yeah. Yeah. The color box, it's it's a very dynamic pedal, but the way it breaks up is just spits and... Once you get past normal overdrives and distortions, you get into that world of really lo-fi things going bitty and mm -hmm. broken down and... And I'm assuming we can go there with that. With that, it sounds like this is going to get there to that really kind of. Yeah, it, it can do. So, why just just before we go on, why mm -hmm. why are some knobs red and some knobs blue? Okay, and... basically we've got. This is the EQ section here, the blue. Yeah. So treble, middle, and bass. Yeah. So I'll have a quick stretch of those. <laughs> Pretty powerful. Very powerful. Then we have this high pass thing, and this is so cool. So basically, if you flick the little switch. You can instantly see a use for that. There you go. So yeah. you use it to tighten up the bottom end. Yeah. Um, so that's just a, that's just a shelf. Just a straight shelf. Yeah. And then set the frequency. Yeah. Then the top we have the sort of the gain section. So the master and the pre volume, which we know from all the gain structure videos that we've done. Then we have the step control. Now the step control, it's like a uh, a volume control in between two gain sections. So the the more um, it's actually on little click notches. So each click a huge amount. Yeah. So but here's the thing. Let me turn the master down. With that level of gain that we have there, the step control set at that uh, amount of gain. I mean, it's broken. It's just busted. <laughs> so now, if you turn down the step, yeah. each one. Yeah. yeah. So increasing levels of filthy brokenness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that broken speaker sound. Yes, and that is a sound into itself, and yeah, yeah. you know. Um, oh, I know. I got I got mates. One one in particular I can think of, Chris, who uh, you know he's just he just doesn't do standard overdrive pedals. Sure. Hates them because yeah. they just sound too nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. And he would love that. Yeah. Because it's aggressive and nasty. And if you're a producer and you're looking for something a little bit special, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Part of the reason I love it is that the character it has when you, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. In a, in a rock band sort of sense, big open sounding chords, fantastic. But I love the way it cleans up. So, on the neck pickup. Playing reverb. Now, let's try that in comparison to the blues driver. And we know the blues driver cleans up beautifully because that's Andy Timmons' clean sound. Yep. But uh, the way this cleans up, I think, is very special. Seems to uh, retain a, a lot of dynamic and size of mm -hmm. the sound. Yes. So where maybe um, one thing that overdrive pedals in particular get criticised for is that they kind of shrink everything down and make things sound small and contained. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of that 
in that in the in the color box whatsoever. No, no. it sounds big, huge. Yes. Yeah. The thing is, though, it's not a sort of pedal that you get and you think you plug it in. All of a sudden, everything's amazing. I did have to sit down with this, mm. as you know, when I first plugged it in, it was like, ew. Yeah. Because um, there's a lot going on and everything is interactive. It is designed to be used into a guitar amp. It's designed to be, well, yes, of course. It's a yeah. pedal and it can be used with great results into a guitar amp. But you can also, it also has XLR inputs and outputs on it as well. Yeah. So you can use it with anything. It is for all intents and purposes a, a mixing desk preamp. Yeah. Um, it is designed, I mean, the circuit is very close to the 1073. Yeah. Um, but the reality is if they were using the same transformers and everything that 1073 had, it wouldn't cost $400. No. It would cost $1,400. And it would be in a case it as big as that bigger. board. Yes, of course, because <laughs> then there are a number of transformers in the, in the yeah. you know. Yeah, so yeah. it is not a clone of a 1073. And, and to be honest, looking at the literature, it doesn't say that it's a clone of a 1073. It says... It uses the circuit. It's got some really good transformers. So it's got really good transformers. It's got Lundell transformers in there, which are fantastic. Um, they're not the same transformers that we used. No, in no, the 1073. No. This runs on 18 volts. The 1073 run on 24 volts. You know, there are differences there. Yeah. But for that effect, to have, you know, basically an old mixing desk preamp, use it as an overdrive pedal, or use it with whatever. I think it's a very cool thing to do. Um, for example, let's have a look at the color box straight into the AER. Now if I just go here, I'm gonna turn this off so you can hear the sound of the guitar straight into the little. Yep, electric guitar into a very, very, very clean transistor. Yeah, an acoustic guitar amplifier. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Which is basically a, little, a small PA. Yeah, a small PA. Yep, yeah. yep. So, now if I turn this on, now it's set up to overdrive, okay? <laughs> okay. As opposed to this in the amplifier. Again... The amplifier is rounding off all those half edges, but let's go back to, to um, the color box into the AER and let's set it up to work into the AER. Because I, I just the, the sound you got there. I, when I was eight years old, I had a KSG copy and a uh, K plastic cased five watt amp, and it sounded exactly like that. <laughs> It sounded exactly like that. And that's a sound. That is a yeah. lo-fi, you know, that is the sound yeah, of the yeah, pedal. Yeah. That's not the the um, the app crapping itself. That's yeah. the sound of the pedal. Can I just hear it with P90? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> When I was eight, I could play it better, but... Hang on, keep going. There you go. With apologies to Collings and AER. <laughs> um... So that is the sound of it. Yeah. You know. So, so far, not getting my four hundred dollars. <laughs> no. So let's set it up so that we get some some clean stuff happening. From yeah, it. yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do? Turn the pre-volume back down. Okay. you back off your volume a little bit?
what's the application then? Am I just getting a nice clean straight to desk sound? It's basically you're going through that preamp, that mixing desk preamp before mm. it hits the AER. And it just it colours the signal. So for example, I mean, there are loads of guys who um, have used that for their clean sound in the studio. It it doesn't it seems to break up mm. very early this. It doesn't need to have a great deal of headroom. If they were running it on 18 volts. Um, but if I can describe the cable for a second, with a tele, with a telly, it's fine. But I did notice that on the Les Paul as well. Yeah, like yeah. Very early. Um, but with a Telecaster. Yeah. As opposed to. Yeah. I mean, that's, so let's match the volume so you can just hear. Yeah. There are loads of guys who've used their clean sound just plugging straight into the desk. Um, it's Dilly Dan. There's you know, that. when uh, Elliot comes in with a... It's just... There's that Steely Dan song, the Hey 19. You can hear the compression. Yeah, you can push it a bit as well. The more you play it, the more I'm going, ah, oh, I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that. That's Not necessarily the, the Steely Dan thing, but just lots of clean it... sounds on record. Ah, ah come on. It's a very particular. The Steve Vai thing, you know. Just want to try something a minute. Juicer. Yeah, but a no, bit, more, bit more compression. But, but that's the, the more you hear it, the more it's. I mean, if let's just. That's the sound. No, that is the sound. It is that, you know. Let's just say again that we are running. This is an electric guitar into an acoustic guitar amp. Let's hear it without, without the color box. I never. I was struggling to see where we were gonna go with that. Mm -hmm. With the AER. With the AER. Yeah. But that's. I'm trying not to say interesting. No. No. <laughs> I think it's special, personally. I think. I think, if you're a producer, there's a whole lot of applications yeah. you can have that for. I've seen demos of this where the guys are putting drums and everything through it, and it sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As an overdrive pedal, I do love it. Yeah, you know, I think it's great. It's not cheap. They're they're four hundred dollars. So you know, probably by the time it gets to the UK, uh, adding tax and shipping, three thousand seven hundred and ninety-five pounds. Yeah, you know, they're they're um yeah. So they're not they're not cheap. But no, it, you're not gonna you're not gonna drop that amount of cash to have it as an overdrive pedal on your board, are you? That's not gonna 
Well, well, you might, but <laughs> I might. More, more likely, I have. <coughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, but if you do a lot of recording, because you, you know you can put bass through it, presumably you could put vocals yeah, yeah. through it. You could, because it's full range and it's got the XLR in and outs. So there's there are a whole load of uh, and it, uh, Pete Thorne's demo. He like puts drums through it yeah, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's wicked. So uh, yeah, I can see it. If you if you're a keen recordist and you want essentially a channel strip with that massive gain makeup, mm -hmm. I can kind of see it. Mm. What happens if you? Um, where have we got it in the chain at the moment? Uh, it's early on the chain. What happens if What happens if we smash the front of the blues driver with it? Will that work, yeah. or will that just be terrible? Yeah, no, let's make that happen. So, blues driver. So, uh, there's the color box to play for us. There's the blues driver. You hear that? How small? It's like compared to that. Ooh. That sounds great. All right, now, this is the blues driver. Breaking, it's really kind of, it's got that breaking speaker aggressiveness about it, mm. um, which is not a sound that I'm into, but I know lots of people who would really, really love that. Um, what happens if we do this? So, this will probably be ridiculously loud, will it? <laughs> I'm struggling for things to play there. <laughs> um, I know people who would really like that. Okay. <laughs> That's code for. Do you like it? I do. Yeah. I do. There's a uniformity about the way normal overdrive pedals break up mm. and they're smooth and they're great. You know, I, I love them. I have hundreds yep. of the things. That's a bit different and I like that. There's a few overdrive pedals, distortion pedals and fuzz pedals that have these transformers in them as part of the circuit and they always... You know, the way that the transformer colours the tone yeah. is always really interesting. Um, I had a, there's a Shiné Fuzzwa, and uh, it's got a little transformer in there as well, and the it does sound spectacular. Um, but yeah, I, I really like it. I really like it. But it's interesting just how divisive it is. Yeah, I can see, I can see why. Um, it's one of those things that uh, at no point are you ever going to plug in and go... Oh yeah, I get that. Not like, you know, you plug into the Angry Charlie or, or whatever, or a blues driver, or, and you think, yeah, I can, I understand what that's for, and it's great, it's, that's the way it sounds, and that's all good. Mm. With that, I think you need to come at it with a more specific intent in mind, and be prepared to really work with it to kind of tweak it into where you want it to be. Sure. But because it's not an overdrive pedal. No, no, no. That's the no. thing. If, if you approach it like an overdrive pedal, it's going to, you know... It doesn't work like that. But if you approach it as a preamp, which mm. is what it is, and you know, dial it in to work with the amp and everything that you're using, 
then I think, you know, it can sound fantastic. Groovy. Groovy. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. I hope um, you enjoyed that. I hope that, you know... Well, we, we didn't do what everyone else did, which was make a track with it, with all the... everything going through perfectly produced. We just plugged in and... Uh... It is that pedal show. So, you know, we're looking at it as a, as a pedal as opposed to, a, you know, big recording platform. Gave it some grit. Yeah. But, you know... I really like it, especially for rhythm stuff. Those big open chords, you know, I think it sounds sounds fantastic. That was definitely the, the, for me the the two two highlights were that really super clean hi fi electric guitar sound mm. straight in, mm -hmm. um, and also the way it was pushing the the telly. Yeah, it's quite special the, with the telly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get there's very few overdrive pedals you get that of with that kind of width. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There cool. you go. JHS Colorbox. Hope you enjoyed that, guys, and. Uh, have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. See you then. See you guys.